Okay, so uh, let's start. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, my big pleasure to introduce Matthias Schut from uh, Hannover, and uh, he will speak about rational cursor and request surfaces, uh, but only few. Well, thank you very much, Vanya, for the introduction, for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to speak here. I'm talking about joint work with Slavek Rams from Krakow, which is fairly recent, but builds on things we did for the last couple of years. So let's get started. And rational curves being a, an extremely classical topic, just think of the 27 lines on the smooth cubic or 64 lines on the smooth quartic in P3, and we'll come back to this one in a second. So the idea is to have analogous uniform finiteness results for what? For rational curves with bounded degree, and the objects we'll consider are polarized K3s and polarized Enrique surfaces. The story is mostly in parallel between K3s and Enrique's. So we'll first talk as a motivation a bit more about K3s, then talk about both at the same time, and then towards the end, when we try to make things effective, turn exclusively to the Enrique's, where things work out much better, surprisingly. If there are questions, just interrupt me, and I'll try to answer. OK, so where to start? Let me tell you why. I had this uh, little restriction or the, the little extra statement in the title, but only few because, as probably all of you know, every K3 surface, at least over the complex numbers, there's also some recent progress in positive characteristic, but over the complex numbers, they always contain infinitely many rational curves. Uh, this was a long standing conjecture, and if I go through the history briefly, uh, the first result in this direction was due to Bogomolov and Mumford, who proved that there is a rational curve on any complex K3. And then Shi Chen proved that uh, the conjecture is true for very general K3s, so the Picard number here had to be one. Bogomolov and Chinkel proved it also works when the automorphism group is infinite or if there's an elliptic vibration. So this meant for Picard number at least five, it's fine. And then the next breakthrough was due to Bogomolov, Hassett, and Schinkel, who proved that it's okay on double sex sticks, but the restriction is of odd Picard number. This was taken on by Lee and Liebke, who proved any K3 of odd Picard number works. And then last summer, uh, Chen, Gunellas, and Liebke announced a proof that it works for all K3s. So this conjecture can now be considered a theorem. And the same thing works for Enrique surfaces, there are always infinitely many rational curves, and you can think of different kind of arguments. The first one is just take the covering K3, but I mean here you rely on very recent results, so you can also make it more elementary, going back to work of Bart Peters and Kondo. For instance, you can deduce that there is some rational curve because every Enrique surface admits a genus one vibration, and then you just take a singular fiber, and then outside a certain uh, number of Enrique surfaces, this is Condos types one to seven, every Enrique surface has infinite automorphism group. So this will move around the rational curve in your surface because it's a fiber of a genus one vibration. It's only kind of uh, stabilized by a finite subset of the automorphism group. Or you can just think lattice theoretically the genus one vibrations correspond to primitive isotropic vectors in NUM, such that the corresponding linear system to twice the vector has no base locus. And I mean, there are infinitely many of these, unless you are in condos surfaces. And these condo surfaces, they're exactly those with finite automorphism group. And I'm emphasizing them already here because they are showing up later again. So with infinitely many rational curves, we have to make it into a finite problem. And this we can do by specifying or by bounding the degree. And this is, will be relative to a given polarization. So this will re refer to a very ample divisor, H, and we'll just consider the square of H, 2n. So we'll talk about 2n polarized surfaces. And let's talk about the first classical problem, so to say, this is n equal two. We're talking about quartics, and we all know this goes back to Noether originally. Generally, 
the smooth quartic contains no line. And then Sikre stated in 43 over the complex numbers that there are at most 64 lines on the smooth quartic. Um, the problem is that he claimed that the valency of each line, so this is the number of adjacent lines, is at most 18. And uh, this statement is okay for lines of the first kind, and I'll tell you in a second what these are, but not for lines of the second kind. So what is the geometric picture behind this, which also tells you what these notions are. So the line comes with a pencil of hyperplanes. Um, maybe you can even see it, if I touch here. So it comes with a pencil of hyperplanes containing the line, and this induces a genus one vibration from the quartic to P1. And then you consider the residual cubics. So these are the fibers of the vibration, and the line is called of the second kind if it's contained in the flex locus of the smooth fibers, or the closure of the flex locus. So this is a very specific property. And Segre uh, thought also for these lines, the valency is at most 18. But then some 60, 70 years later, Swavik and I realized that this does not hold true. So there are some five dimensional families, or there's one five dimensional family of quartics, which which um, exactly does not fulfill this valence debut. We at least have valency at most 20 outside characteristic three, but you have to deal with this extra family. The advantage is that it has some extra symmetries and is nice enough. There's an interruption here. Ich kann nicht. Nein. 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 Nice. Oops, can't you name? Vegetables are okay, aren't they? Sorry for the interruption. So where were we? So this family is, is nice enough so you can uh, kind of rule out or you deal with these extra cases with high valency. So Sekhle's claim in fact is okay. And the way uh, we do this geometrically, you can even prove that it works in any characteristic different from three. And why is three different? Because there the Fermat quartic contains not only the usual 48 lines, but 112 lines. So this is super singular and unirational and whatever you want. So that's why characteristic three is very special. In characteristic different from two and three, and this is one of the issues that we'll also touch upon in our considerations about lines, this result is also sharp because uh, there's a quartic which goes back to Schur, so this is Schur's quartic, which contains exactly these 64 lines. Um, subsequent improvements, for instance, if you think about characteristic two, you can push the bound to 60. This goes back to Dechtelf, who uh, considered super singular K quartic K3s, and then again it's sharp, and this fits in nicely with work of Dechtelf, Bietenberg, and Sertisch, who used Torelli theorems and uh, computer-aided computations to prove that uh, a quartic with 64 lines is unique. It's automatically sure. And then they develop the next kind of record surfaces. So they sit, show the next record is 60 lines. Um, there are two or three kind of surfaces like that. And one of them reduces nicely to a characteristic two. And then it's probably 58 and 56. So, and so on. You can also go in a different direction. Uh, Vignani developed the same bounds for quartics with isolated rational double points. Again, there's a subtlety in characteristic two where the number of lines can surprisingly go up. But this is kind of the situation for quartic K3 surfaces. And now let's turn to rational curves of given degree. There's a, a central result of Miyaoka. So now we fix the polarization of degree 2n, and then we just uh, introduce a counting function, rd. This just counts the rational curves of degree d on my given K3 surface. And what Muyaoka proved in 2009 is that we fix d, and we let n be large enough, so the polarization is large, then every 2n polarized K3 surface fulfills a certain inequality, namely if you sum up these counting functions, but weighted by the degree of the curves, then this is bounded by 24d. 
And now what does this mean? This means in particular that Rd itself is at most 24. And Miyaoka concluded with the question whether this was sharp. Uh, this was kind of our starting point where we got interested in this kind of problem. The proof is purely complex, so this uses the orbifold Miyaoka Yao Sakai inequality. Uh, with, and then this result comes out as a surprising application. Okay, now turning back to lines, Miyaoka's result was made very explicit by Dekterev maybe two years ago, again over C, where he proves that uh, the number of lines is at most 24, yes, of course, but sometimes it's, it's at most 22 or even 21. And all of this just depends on N modulo 60. And he also proves that if N is big enough, then all of these bounds are sharp. If you want to see an example, let's consider the Fermat quartic again. Bart already in the early 80s showed that it admits, admits a very symmetric genus one vibration, namely one where there are six fibers of Godira type 1, 4. So these are four quadrangles of smooth rational curves. And then you play with the normal hyperplane section and you can, using sonder nast theory, arrange for arithmetic progressions of n, of this degree of the polarization, or half of it, where you really get 21 smooth rational curves of degree one. So 21 lines, uh, 21 I'm saying, I meant of course 24. So these are the 24 fiber components and they appear as lines. And the key idea now is to try to adapt ideas of Dekterev for the general case, where we allow rational curves of any degree and not only smooth rational curves. So what are our aims? First of all, we want to cover all degrees, not only degree one. And then unlike in Miyaoka's formula where there were, was this weighted sum of, of counting functions, we want to just count the sum of them. So we want to consider all rational curves of degree at most d and try to cons uh, bound their number uh, we want to try to set it up in such a way that we cover all characteristics alike. And there is a little restriction here in characteristic two and three, as we'll see, but other than that, it goes all through. And then we'll try to prove that the bounds are sharp. And I mean both bounds. On the one hand, that this counting argument at most, how many ever lines it turns out or curves it turns out should be sharp. And on the other hand, we also want to prove a good effective bound for the, po for the polarization. Not big enough, then it holds, but really try to be as sharp as possible. And then let's not do it, let, let's not only do it for K3s, but also for Enrique surfaces. So this is the aim, and we'll almost prove everything of this in today's talk. Well, K3s, I'll be very short towards the end about that. So what are the main results? And now I'll tell you the ineffective versions first and tell you how to prove them, because this gives you a good idea of what's going on. And then towards the end, we can try to make all of these things effective. So the first theorem concerns K3s. Let's assume the characteristic is different from two and three. Then fixing D for every polarization that's big enough, we know two n polarized K3s have at most 24 curves, rational curves of degree D. So this is this generalization of Miyoka's result by considering all of degree D and just taking the number. For Enrique surfaces, we can be even a bit more general. Characteristic three is also fine. We just have to exclude characteristic two. And you all may know that in characteristic two, Enriquez are very special indeed, or there are very special Enriquez. And it's the same kind of statement, D fixed. If the polarization is big enough, then for all two n polarized Enriquez, there are at most 12 rational curves of degree at most D. So it's really uh, almost the same result. The exceptional characteristics uh, we can also cover. There is some um, cost that we have to pay some price, but I'll, we'll come back to that later. 
So this is what I'll talk about now. And the idea is to just consider this set of rational curves of bounded degree, bounded by D. And then one can think of this as a graph with multiple edges for the intersection numbers. And then each vertex has two labels, namely the degree and the square. And I mean, the graph is quite useful because we'll also kind of, uh, we won't, but uh, in our proof, we were drawing a lot of graphs and trying to sort out configurations. I'll talk very briefly later about that. Now, we have to consider three cases, or no. First of all, we, we consider the lattice coming from this graph. This is maybe not the kind of lattice that we usually prefer because it may well be degenerate. But regardless of this, it just falls into three cases. Elliptic, so it's negative definite. Parabolic, negative semi-definite. Or hyperbolic, where there's exactly there's one positive definite space, but no more. And this restriction comes from the Hodge index theorem. So let's talk about the elliptic case. So here, now what are intersection numbers of curves on K3 surfaces? They are minus two or zero or positive. So if gamma is negative definite, you automatically know all the curves in gamma are minus two curves. So every rational curve is automatically smooth. And that also means that this lattice Z gamma is generated by roots. So this means it's an orthogonal sum of Dinkin diagrams and the number of elements in gamma is just the rank of this orthogonal sum. So this is negative definite. Therefore, it's bounded by rho minus one, Picard number minus one. So we get B2 minus one at most. So this is 21 for the K3s and nine, nine for the Enriquez. If we want to work over C, the 21 can be improved to 19, but this will not be relevant for our later arguments. Note there's no input or restriction from N or from D. So this is independent of N and D, except that the definition of gamma involved D. The parabolic case is quite similar. Here, it's negative semi-definite. So the squares of the curves in gamma can all be minus two, smooth rational, or they could be zero. So this would be singular cubics, nodal or cuspidal. And in this case, by the same kind of argument, Z gamma is an orthogonal sum of Dinkin diagrams, extended Dinkin diagrams, and of course we can, or we have to allow for isotropic vectors. So this would correspond to the singular cubics. And now enters, well, if you've seen a talk by my, of mine, sooner or later this happens always, now enters a genus one vibration or an elliptic vibration, but on the Enriquez it will be a genus one vibration. And this is induced by any isotropic vector, D, non-trivial isotropic vector in this lattice. And that means that all curves in gamma are fiber components of this genus one vibration. We'll come back to genus one vibrations in detail later. But for now, let's just note that this number is bounded, namely by the euler poincare characteristic. Well, at least that's true if the general fiber is smooth. And then we just get the upper bound given by the second Betty number, which is 24 and 12, which is exactly the bound we had in the two theorems. Again, no restrictions imposed by N and D. So at the same time, this gives us a recipe for constructing surfaces with 24 or 12 rational curves. And exactly in the way we had this example on the Fermat quartet. So this will allow us later to see that the main theorems are really sharp and they are sharp basically always. So I pointed out, I need that the general fiber is smooth. If it's not, this is the quasi-elliptic case. This only happens in the exceptional characteristics. So two and three for K3 or characteristic two for an Enriquez surface. There we get analogous bounds, but only for the smooth rational curves. Because the quasi-elliptic vibration, of course, as soon as the ground field is infinite, has infinitely many cuspidal cubics. And they will all have the same degree uh, on any projective model. So here, exactly the finiteness arguments that we're aiming for fails unless we restrict really to smooth rational curves 
R2 curves different from, from cuspidal cubics. Okay, so this is the parabolic case and it fits well with the picture. So what's left? We had elliptic, parabolic and hyperbolic. So what's left is the hyperbolic case. And this turns out quite easily to handle, at least abstractly, not being effective. So what is the idea? Let us consider some non-degenerate lattice L, which is obtained by modding out our lattice Z gamma by the kernel. Now you can just check that this embeds into the neuron severity lattice. And that means the following. We endow L, or maybe we have to tensor with Q, with an intrinsic object, which Dekteref in the line case calls the intrinsic polarization. It might not even exist, but if it exists, then it's determined by the degrees of the curves. So we just postulate that the intersection number of any curve with this Q divisor should give the degree of the curve. And that's for any C in gamma. If gamma is big, then this system of equations might be overdetermined. So this is why the intrinsic polarization may cease to exist. And if it does not exist, then we get a, a contradiction anyway. But what follows now is L embeds into the Nairn Severi lattice, both are hyperbolic. So the orthogonal complement is negative definite. And this you can use to deduce that the square of the polarization is bounded by the square of this intrinsic polarization. So we get an upper bound for H square. So if you consider a, some given configuration gamma, this is quite useful. In practice, how do we use this? Well, don't work with your full configuration gamma, just pick some gamma zero that's elliptic or parabolic, some sub configuration or sub graph, and then join in one more curve. Oh, here, there's a VU, V0 written, of course, C0 is meant. So pick some another curve C0, such that when you enjoin it to gamma zero, you get something that's hyperbolic. And then of course we get kind of an easy or cheap upper bound for H square. Okay, now this works for some gamma zero and gamma prime. How does this help us to, to deal with large polarizations? The idea is that uh, there are only finitely many configurations. First of all, for gamma zero, because that's what we've seen in the elliptic or hyperbolic case. Um, this is just the orthogonal sum of Dinkin diagrams or extended Dinkin diagrams. And then of course, in the lattice modding out the kernel, uh, well that's, uh, all the isotropic vectors are the same. So this gives finitely many configurations. And then adjoining the curve C zero, we also have only finite many possibilities because the square of C zero is bounded by D square divided by two and the intersection of two curves is at most the square of the degrees. So this is bounded by D square. So that means there are lots and lots, but only finitely many possible configurations that can or that we have to consider. And if we take the maximum of the squares of all the intrinsic polarizations, we get an ineffective bound for the polarization. Note, independent of X, because we just were considering abstract configurations. And to conclude the proof of our ineffective theorems, if 2N is now exceeding M, is exceeding this maximum of the squares of the intrinsic polarizations, then gamma can never be hyperbolic. Hence, the bounds from the elliptic and parabolic case persist. So in the last line it should read parabolic case because this is exactly giving me 24 or 12. And we first got this for K3s and thought okay for Enriquez it works the same and uh, wanted to leave it like that but then we were prompted to try to make this effective. And now I'll tell you the effective results for Enrique's surfaces, not for K3s. 
and I'll tell you in a second why Enric is. So we had n has to be big enough. Now we just choose n greater than 60 squared, where d, the degree, is fixed again. And the claim is for every 2n polarized Enriquez surface with smooth K3 cover, there are at most 12 rational curves of degree at most d. Smooth K3 cover, you don't have to worry about that too much. This is only serving to rule out quasi-elliptic vibrations in characteristic two. So some of those very special classical and super singular Enriquez surfaces where the cover is not a smooth K3 surface, but it's only K3-like. Okay, and I mean, we've seen in the argument on the preceding slides, quasi-elliptic vibrations cause some trouble. So once we rule out these, we're in business. Why Enriquez surfaces? First reason, you might think, okay, maybe let's not touch them. Usually they are more complicated than K3 surfaces. At least that's my experience. And you can see this in many properties. For instance, there can be cohomologically trivial automorphisms, unlike for K3s or genus one vibrations with multiple fibers and no sections. So this is inconvenient. What else you can think of? Uh, finiteness problems which behave rather differently and I mean they will come into this game here as well. Yes, also you can say they are maybe less explicit than K3 surfaces. So there are many reasons maybe to try to do K3s first. We did and the result was not very uh, sharp, or at least it looked not very sharp. And now it turns out for Enrique's surfaces, the theorem I propose, it's almost sharp. The main advantage is that B2 is just smaller. So uh, there is less space for, uh, for special configurations and there are less configurations to consider. The big benefit that I mentioned is the bound is not only sharp for sigma d, so we'll not only find many Enriquez containing 12 lines of small degree, but we can prove that this bound for n, for the degree of the polarization, is almost optimal. So this is the little proposition I include here. I have to admit in characteristic two and five, it will not work. So there you have to think again how good the bound for n is. But in general, outside these characteristics, you fix d and you set n to be 60 squared minus one. So it's one less than the threshold we had on the previous slide. And the claim is there is a two n polarized Enrique surface with 13 rational curves of degree at most d. So n greater than 60 squared at most 12, n 60 squared minus one, 13. So there's only one case left where we could try to improve on our theorem. And I should also already tell you, I'll tell you later a bit more how to construct this example. It's a very special Enrique surface with finite automorphism group S5. Kondo calls this of type seven. And this will contain 12 smooth rational curves of degree D and one of degree two. So it's a very special configuration. So the general setup is uh, we already used bound for ski, bounds for C square and so on. Let's push them a bit further. And you just use the Hodge index theorem to see that C square is in fact bounded by D square divided by two N. So if N is big enough, this means C square can only be zero or minus two. And big enough here already means greater than D square by N. Probably I mean the absolute value of C square here, right? So please take that for, for granted. Um, in the same way, one can prove that isotropic vectors are perpendicular. And you can prove if you two, take two smooth rational curves, the intersection number is at most two. So this simplifies the analysis greatly. And you see, we're already somehow close to the situation with lines where intersection numbers were only zero and one and every line had square minus two. Now, how do you proceed? 
you just do a case-by-case -case analysis, starting from elliptic subgraphs and then adjoining curves like this to realize that as soon as gamma is not elliptic, then it supports a divisor D of Kodaira type. So this means a divisor which appears as a singular fiber of a genus one vibration, as studied by Kodaira. And here we understand this to include singular cubics. Usually maybe you don't want to do this. Let's do this for now. And then of course D features as a fiber of a genus one vibration, or one of the subtleties, it could also be a half fiber of the genus one vibration given by 2D. Okay, so this will play out to our advantage in a second. This was general setup. Let's dive into the proof. So we assume that the polarization is big enough. That means H squared is greater than 12D squared. And we assume that there are more than 12 rational curves of degree at most d. So by what we've seen before, gamma is hyperbolic and it supports a divisor d of Kodaira type. Now let's recall the bound we had, hyperbolic lattice. Here we obtain this by modding out z gamma by the kernel, gives us this inequality, polarization square is bounded by this intrinsic polarization square. And of course, on the other hand, we know this is at least 12 D square. Now we'll apply it to the easiest hyperbolic lattice that we can think of, not positive definite. So we just supplement our divisor D of Kodaira type by any curve C and gamma that's a, that's a multi-section of the genus one vibration. There has to be such a curve, otherwise gamma would be parabolic. So take any such curve and then computing this intrinsic polarization, you see that the degree of D is greater than 2D. This may look innocent, but it gives you a key reduction. Namely, this means that on your K3, on your Enriquez, or K3 it's even better, I mean, oh no, Okay, three, it would be the same with these bounds. On your Enriquez, there are no divisors of Kodaira type. And now this is one, 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 two, two, and three in Kodaira's notation. So there are no singular fibers with at most one, with one or two components supported on your set gamma. So this rules out many cases which would be kind of a pain to consider. In particular, this means that gamma only contains smooth rational curves. And two of them cannot meet with multiplicity two. So we really have the same intersection numbers as with lines, only that the degrees now can be bigger. So this is the situation and it simplifies our combinatorial analysis substantially. So how do we proceed? Let me remind you of Kolo's construction that comes in a second. So we can make the previous argument more precise. If the degree of D is at most 4D, then you can deduce from what we've seen above that D is met by this multi-section C with multiplicity one, which means that C is a bisection and D has to be a half fiber. So this is a very special divisor. And in particular, this means that any divisor of type Kodaira type 1, 3 or 1, 4, so this is a triangle or quadrangle, is automatically a half fiber. Very restrictive condition, which will be very useful later. And it also excludes type 4. So this is three components meeting in a single point. And the argument I told you also means that any multi-section in gamma is already a bisection. And it's smooth rational, we've seen that before. And now comes the consequence I already mentioned. That means that X arises from Kondo's construction. So this is something Kondo worked out in his paper on finite automorphism groups of Enrique surfaces. So what is the situation? I'll give you a diagram on the next page. Generally, you have a genus one vibration on your Enriquez. So in, this induces a genus one vibration on the K3 cover. Usually you have bisections, and so there's no reason to assume they will split upstairs. But here, 
you have a smooth rational bisection. So this splits automatically into two disjoint smooth rational curves on the K3 cover. And then it follows that they form sections. Now this means that the K3 is a quadratic, quadratic base change of the Jacobian of X. So here we take the genus one vibration on our Enrique surface and consider the Jacobian. This is a rational elliptic surface. And the section upstairs, choose one as the zero section, then the other is anti-invariant for the deck transformation of this quadratic base change. And then you can see that if you compose the translation by the section and the deck transformation, you exactly get back the Enriquez evolution. So this works over C, it works in any characteristic just the same. And it's extremely convenient because this way you can construct Enriquez surfaces. You can use this for classification purposes. So Kondo used this in characteristic zero, Gephardt Martin used this in positive characteristic to classify Enriquez surfaces with finite automorphism group and with smooth K3 cover. So this is quite useful. And I'll tell you in a second after the diagrams where we will use it. So here are the diagrams. The upper one displays the usual parallel structure where you have X, the Enriquez, and the K3 cover with their genus one vibrations. And on the right hand side, you have the Jacobians, which also map uh, have a two to one cover. And in our situation now, your bisection splits on the K3. So basically, the two parallel structures come together, and you can start from the, if you want, from the rational elliptic surface, go to the K3, endow it with a suitable section P and then use the section to construct the Enrique surfaces. So this is how you can play this game. What is one of the advantages, well, what are the advantages of this construction due to Kondo? First of all, it's kind of explicit or explicit enough. And secondly, you can also use some extra theory. For instance, on the K3 cover, you can use the theory of Moravey lattices. On the one hand, to construct Enrique surfaces. On the other hand, this is where we will use it. You can also sometimes use this to rule out certain configurations that you would like to rule out. Okay, now comes the configuration analysis and I'll spare you most of the details. The rough idea is first to prove that uh, the divisors are not arbitrary, uh, the singular fibers are not arbitrary, but you can always reduce to the case where there is a 1n Devices are supported on gamma. So this is a multiplicative singular fiber, the cycle of n smooth rational curves. And at the same time, all curves in gamma are either fiber components or bisections. And then you start analyzing possible subconfigurations. You just, uh, it's convenient to distinguish whether there are at most three bisections. It means there are many, many fiber components and this is restricted enough. And the other case is where there are at least four bisections, and then you can show that there's always a one three or one four fiber, and this is then very convenient. So going through these sub-configurations, what are you going to do? Either you try to derive a suitable con sub-configuration, which gives you a contradiction, or which leads back to some other case, which might be easier to understand, and here exactly, more available to see sometimes come into the game, or you add sect bisections, fiber components to the graph, and you realize there is some fiber appearing that was not allowed to appear. Or the other option is you just end up with a good upper bound for your intrinsic polarization. And good just means any intrinsic polarization of square at most 12 d square will be fine. Now, how to deal with this intrinsic polarization in some systematic way? Well, this is some kind of optimization problem if you don't want to work with all the lattices uh, in detail. And the easiest way to get an upper bound is just by looking at the gram matrix of gamma zero with respect to some basis given by curves in, in gamma zero. And then you just take the naive upper bound, which is just sum up the entries of the matrix now just sum up the non-negative entries. Yeah, this is certainly giving you an upper bound and often this is good enough. 
some cases where there are negative entries, so are becoming quite tedious. And I'll tell you in a second what well, kind of comes out of this. I'll not show you the details, but then you really have to do a detailed optimization analysis. Okay. Examples. Yeah. So somehow I should put here, this concludes the proof of the effective theorem, because if you do all this, you get good bounds for any possible configuration. And this proves that the statement we had works. So as soon as the polarization has square greater than 12 d square, then there are at most 12 rational curves of degree at most d. And now I should show you that the examples are, or that the results are sharp. So how to do this? What do we have to do? We have to construct polarized and weaker surfaces with 12 rational curves of small degree. And here we'll do ex degree exactly d. We could try to even achieve this with smooth rational curves. I'll quickly mention this one too. And then we should prove that n is really close to optimal, or the bound for n. And that means we want to prove, and I repeat the put proposition here, that if we pick n equal to 6 d squared minus 1, then we can find a 2 and polarized Enrique surface with 13 rational curves of degree d. So let's try to accomplish these things. The approach is, first of all, work with some Enrique surface which seems suitable to you in terms of some genus 1 vibration that you like, and then derive some projective models of it with 12 rational curves, and here you use uh, kind of the analog of saint Donat for Enrique surfaces. This was first developed by Cossack, and you can take a look at the, at the kind of best statement possible in the manuscript by Cossack, Dorgachev, and Liebke. The idea is as soon as the divisor H is big and nef, then very ampleness just uh, kind of depends on two natural conditions. One of them is every half pencil has to be met with multiplicity at least three. And that's, of course, necessary because elliptic curves or singular cubics cannot have degree less than three. And on the other hand, every minus two curve has to be met positively. And the advantage of genus one vibrations is that this is usually easy enough to check because all curves appear as fiber components and multi-sections. So you get a pretty good grasp of them. So this is the approach. And now let's see how to do this in practice. First example, 12 rational curves. So the claim is if D is at least three and N is at least three D, then there is a two N polarized Enrique surface containing 12 rational curves of degree, unfortunately not D, but two D. Even degree, uh, odd degree curves always are a bit subtle because they tend to appear in reducible fibers or as half pencils. So this is why doing even degree is much easier. The construction is uh, following the same lines that we did for K3s before that. So you just pick a general Enrique surface X such that it contains no smooth rational curve. This you can do. And we also want that all singular fibers of genus one vibrations are in fact nodal cubics. So there are no cuspidal cubics. And we want that all half fibers are smooth. We can do all these things at the same time. And then we know from the general theory that we can pick two half fibers which generate the hyperbolic plane U. And then we can already cook up a very ample divisor H as multiple of the one curve plus multiple of the other curve. And looking at the criterion, this will be very ample as soon as both C and D are at least three. There are no minus two curves anyway, so you just have to check the criterion for the half pencils. So what's the square? The square of H is two CD. And of course there are 12 rational curves of degree D. These are the fibers of one of the induced vibrations. And we're done.
The problem is, of course, the values of C of H square are always zero mod two D. So in order to get any polarization greater than three D, we have to adjust this. And this can be done by just picking some vector in U perp. And here for K3s, we had to be more creative. For Enrique surfaces, of course, the Picard group is always the same. So there's always more devices to play around with. And just adding a divisor with square something between minus 2 and minus 2d minus 2, you can make sure that all polarizations are really attained. So this is, uh, in the end, quite easy. Let's try to do it with smooth rational curves. So here we have to assume that the characteristic is different from two. And you'll see in a second, well, you won't, I'll tell you why. So what's the idea? Let's take D greater than two and N at least nine. And we want that N is divisible by D. So this only holds for certain polarizations. Well, we just wanted to show that everything's basically possible. And the statement is there is a 2n polarized Enrique surface containing 12 smooth rational curves and each has degree d. So in this case, we indeed get odd degree, but only certain polarizations. The construction is almost the same as Condor's construction. It's just that you allow the sections on the K3 cover to be, to meet, to intersect. Then as soon as one is the zero section and the other section is uh, enter invariant for the deck transformation from the rational elliptic surface, the same construction works out as soon as you make sure that on the two ramified fibers, uh, there's nothing going on. So this is again a closed condition. And then we can make this all explicit. So you start with a rational elliptic surface which with six fibers of type one, two. And here comes characteristic into ga the game because by the classification of rational elliptic surfaces, these have mod of a group with full two torsion. So in characteristic two, this cannot exist. Otherwise, apply a quadratic base change so this comes in a four dimensional family. And now you specify a suitable subfamily where the K3 cover is really endowed with a suitable section, which comes from the quadratic twist of your rational elliptic surface. So this is all, you can make this explicit in terms of equations. And then you just use the previous criterion to endow it with these um, very ample devices, the fiber components, then give you the 12 degree D curves. So this is quite straightforward. What's left? We had 12 rational curves, we have 12 smooth rational curves. What's left is to prove that N is really, or the bound for N is optimal. So I'll tell you an example with 13 smooth rational curves. What was the background? We wanted to prove, um, intrinsic polarizations on configurations of minus two curves, gamma zero. And I told you most of these things are fairly easy. There's one, well, there was one case which was very painful. And this is the configuration of condo, on condo surface of type seven. So this is one of the two Enrique surfaces with finite automorphism group. And it should be the symmetric proof of five elements. And then condo worked out in the 80s that these contain exactly 20 minus two curves. And I kind of copied part of Kondo's paper, the page with the, with the graph here onto this slide. So you see the configuration of these 20 minus two curves. And for them, it was very hard to prove that the intrinsic polarization is, gives you the bound of 12 D square. And I mean, uh, yeah, this cost us a lot of time, but then it paid back when we were looking for the sharpness thing, because the same configuration takes us close to the bound. And here made explicit for n equals 60 square minus one, you can sort out a configuration of curves, and this will be 
uh, 10 fiber components and three bisections that has uh, the projective model where these curves have degree D or one of them has exactly degree two. So this is why the Enrique story is very close to being uh, to sharp to being sharp. There's only the value of 60 square where we don't know whether this might be doable or not. But beyond that, it's all sorted out. And maybe that's enough of me for today. Thank you. Thank you. Let's thank uh, Matish. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Okay. Uh, <laughs> If you have questions, please please ask now. Okay, maybe I would just add. You all the time spoke about. Do you listen to me? Ah yes. Sorry. I mean, uh, exactly. Uh, the 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 notation is due to Kondo, but of course. Uh, you uh, obtained the same kind of classification independently. No, I first classified in liquid surfaces with finite automorphic group. And I found six types. And one type I forgot and Kondo did it. It's type seven. So I just had to be more exact. Okay, thank you for your nice talk. Yeah, sorry for suppressing you. No, 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 it's fine. These results are great, great. Okay, so any quick okay, so, so any more questions? Uh, <clears throat> just maybe general question. What's uh, what's to do next? Ha. Huh. Well, that's that's up to you. I mean, I still care about lines and conics on Enrique surfaces. So I think at some point we'll try to deal with those. If you see these existence results, the examples at the end, usually they started with degree three or four. So I'm still curious about the small degrees. And I think we can prove there are at most 10 lines on an Enrique surface. But uh, that's maybe not such a surprising result. Um, of course, you can think about things like uh, cubic three folds, uh, cubic four folds, for instance. I think uh -huh. Dekterev has some results there uh -huh. proving finiteness of uh, P2s in there. And of course, yeah, we, we have we talk about this at Zag, I think, by Ilya. Ah, oh, okay. Perfect. Yeah, I saw Dekterev speaking about it. Um, so, you know, there's a uh, progress there. You can try to push in that direction. Of course, you can try to improve the results for K3s further, where, I mean, I did not mention the effective results because they are not, well, they not, don't look sharp enough to me. But this would be quite, quite tedious. That's okay. at least what comes to my mind first. It sounds good. Okay, my dear, thank you very much for a very nice talk. And uh, we we recorded this, so I will upload it if you it's okay with you to the web page sure. of Zach uh, in uh, half an hour. Yeah, thank you very thank much, you. everyone. So uh, see you next week. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you very much again.